How is nuclear fission used peacefully? Nuclear reactors produce electric power. The energy from uranium fission heats water that circulates through the reactor. The heated water produces steam that turns turbines connected to generators. As is the case with all electric power plants. Only about one third of the energy produced by the reactor is converted into electrical energy. The remaining energy heats local rivers, lakes, or the atmosphere. In the United States there are 104 reactors that provide about 20% of the electricity used by our country. How is nuclear fission used peacefully? Nuclear reactors produce electric power. The energy from uranium fission heats water that circulates through the reactor. The heated water produces steam that turns turbines connected to generators. As is the case with all electric power plants. Only about one third of the energy produced by the reactor is converted into electrical energy. The remaining energy heats local rivers, lakes, or the atmosphere. In the United States there are 104 reactors that provide about 20% of the electricity used by our country. What are the strengths and weaknesses of nuclear power? Electric power is produced primarily by plants using hydrocarbon fuels coal, oil, and natural gas. These are usually called fossil fuels and are no longer being created. When they are used up these resources are gone. Nuclear power plants can reduce our reliance on such fuels. Uranium however, is also a fossil fuel. Coal mining has significant environmental costs. Oil is used mostly for transportation. Natural gas is relatively clean and is used mostly for home and industrial heating. Another advantage of nuclear power is the reduction in greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. One major disadvantage of nuclear power is the cost of the plant and the extremely long time scale associated with obtaining approval and constructing the facility. Costs are difficult to calculate precisely, but nuclear power and offshore wind farms are the Two most expensive methods of generating electricity, while oil from the Middle East is the cheapest. As a result of these uncertainties, factors other than costs are increasingly important. Other disadvantages include the production of nuclear waste that poses long term dangers to people due to its intense radioactivity. No long-term storage plans have been AP proved. Although underground storage in salt deposits is the most likely method. What are the strengths and weaknesses of nuclear power?
Electric power is produced primarily by plants using hydrocarbon fuels coal, oil, and natural gas. These are usually called fossil fuels and are no longer being created. When they are used up these resources are gone. Nuclear power plants can reduce our reliance on such fuels. Uranium, however, is also a fossil fuel. Coal mining has significant environmental costs. Oil is used mostly for transportation. Natural gas is relatively clean and is used mostly for home and industrial heating. Another advantage of nuclear power is the reduction in greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. One major disadvantage of nuclear power is the cost of the plant and the extremely long time scale associated with obtaining approval and constructing the facility. Costs are difficult to calculate precisely, but nuclear power and offshore wind farms are the Two most expensive methods of generating electricity, while oil from the Middle East is the cheapest. As a result of these uncertainties, factors other than costs are increasingly important. Other disadvantages include the production of nuclear waste that poses long-term dangers to people due to its intense radioactivity. No long-term storage plans have been AP proved. Although underground storage in salt deposits is the most likely method. Will more nuclear power plants be built? Concerns over the build-up of greenhouse gases and the environmental problems caused by coal mining has led to renewed interest in building new nuclear power plants. Advocates of construction point out that if a standardized plant could be designed, then licensing delays could be reduced and design costs minimized. In addition, Several new types of plants have been suggested and undergone small-scale testing. These promise to be simpler and safer than traditional designs. While recycling nuclear fuel is an attractive option. The plutonium in used fuel rods raises issues of nuclear weapon proliferation. The problem of long-term storage of nuclear waste still needs to be solved. Will more nuclear power plants be built? Concerns over the build-up of greenhouse gases and the environmental problems caused by coal mining has led to renewed interest in building new nuclear power plants. Advocates of construction point out that if a standardized plant could be designed, then licensing delays could be reduced and design costs minimized. In addition, Several new types of plants have been suggested and undergone small-scale testing. These promise to be simpler and safer than traditional designs. While recycling nuclear fuel is an attractive option. The plutonium in used fuel rods raises issues of nuclear weapon proliferation. The problem of long-term storage of nuclear waste still needs to be solved.
What is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion is the opposite of fission. Two nuclei join, or fuse together, forming a more massive nucleus. The mass of the resultant nucleus is less than that of the reacting nuclei, so energy is released. Because the reacting nuclei are both positively charged, there is a large repulsive force between them. To overcome this force the reacting nuclei must have very high energy. Fusion was first observed by the British physicist Mark Oliphant. 1901-2000, in 1932. A typical fusion reaction involves two isotopes of hydrogen, 2H, or deuterium, and 3H, or tritium. They fuse to produce 4 He, releasing a neutron. The energy released is more than a million times larger than that released. When an electron combines with a proton to produce a hydrogen atom. Nuclear fusion occurs naturally in stars like our Sun, but reproducing a fusion reaction in the laboratory has proven to be very difficult because it takes a lot of energy to fuse nuclei together. What is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion is the opposite of fission. Two nuclei join, or fuse together, forming a more massive nucleus. The mass of the resultant nucleus is less than that of the reacting nuclei, so energy is released. Because the reacting nuclei are both positively charged, there is a large repulsive force between them. To overcome this force the reacting nuclei must have very high energy. Fusion was first observed by the British physicist Mark Oliphant. 1901-2000, in 1932. A typical fusion reaction involves two isotopes of hydrogen, 2H, or deuterium, and 3H, or tritium. They fuse to produce 4 He, releasing a neutron. The energy released is more than a million times larger than that released. When an electron combines with a proton to produce a hydrogen atom, Nuclear fusion occurs naturally in stars like our Sun, but reproducing a fusion reaction in the laboratory has proven to be very difficult because it takes a lot of energy to fuse nuclei together. How was the plutonium bomb used? The plutonium bomb, named Fat Man for its shape, was dropped on the city of Nagasaki, Japan. On August 9, 1945, it contained 6.4 kilograms, 14 pounds, of plutonium-239, about 20% fissionide, and less than 1 gram was converted into energy with the equivalent of 21,000 tons of TNT. As many as 80,000 people were killed in the attack. How did a fogged film start a revolution?
in 1896 the French physicist Henri Becquerel, 1852-1908, was exploring the properties of a compound of uranium that glowed in the dark. He placed the compound in a dark drawer on top of a photographic plate that he had wrapped with heavy black paper to make it light tight. The next morning he was surprised to find that the film was already exposed, or fogged. Becquerel presumed that some unknown rays had been emitted by the uranium compound. Gone through the paper, and created the same chemical reaction in the plate that light would. In further experiments he found that a thin piece of metal would block the rays. It was soon alpha, beta, and gammas all are hazardous to our health. Alphas are blocked by skin, but if a radioactive material, such as the gas radium, is inhaled, the alpha particles can cause damage to the lungs. Betas can penetrate skin and tissue and, if they strike a cell, can cause mutations to the DNA. Gammas can cause mutations and kill cells, they are used in cancer radiation therapy. What is quantum mechanics? The field of study of atoms by themselves, as well as in molecules, liquids, and solids in which the wave nature is important is called quantum mechanics. The atoms obey the Schrödinger equation. But for any atom more complicated than hydrogen the equation can be solved only by a computer. Using computers to solve equations, run complicated models, and simulate experiments is an important subdivision of the study of physics called computational physics, which now has equal status with theoretical and experimental physics. Some of the recent accomplishments of quantum mechanics are in the areas of condensed matter physics or the study of solids, and atomic physics. All of the integrated circuits used in MP3 players, televisions, cameras, and automobiles are designed using quantum mechanics. They are all based on diodes and transistors where quantum mechanics describes and explains their properties and guides material scientists to select appropriate materials for their construction. One of the most exciting new materials is graphene. A film of carbon where the atoms are in hexagon-shaped arrays, but the film is only one atom thick. Graphene is being investigated as a way of constructing extremely tiny transistors and thus powerful integrated circuits. It may also be used as a sensor to detect single atoms or molecules of selected materials or as a transparent conductor for touch screen computer displays. Its discoverers won the 2010 Nobel Prize. From 1924 to 1925 Einstein and the Indian physicist Satyendra Nath Bose. 1894 to 1974, predicted that if an atomic gas were cooled enough the atoms could form a new state of matter that would exhibit quantum effects on a macroscopic scale. The first experimental confirmation of this prediction occurred in 1995 when Eric Cornell 1962, and Carl Wieman, 1952 
at the University of Colorado cooled a gas of rubidium atoms to about one-sixth of a millionth of a Kelvin. They and Wolfgang Ketterle, 1957, at MIT shared the 2001 Nobel Prize for their work. While this new state of matter, called a Bose-Einstein condensate, has no existing applications. Physicists are using it to improve their knowledge of how atoms interact at very low temperatures and to explore possible future applications to atomic clocks and computers. Does a compass sometimes point downward along with pointing north? For hundreds of years, navigators using compasses noticed that on occasion. The compass pointer would try to point downward in addition to pointing north. This phenomenon, which went unexplained for several hundred years, was observed by compass maker Robert Norman. He found when flying over the poles one end of the compass would point downward. He understood that the problem was that the pointer was attracted to the pole under the plane. By making the compass rotate in the vertical direction he made the first dip needle. What is a laser tweezer? When a laser is sent through a microscope it creates a tiny spot of very intense light in the material on the slide. A tiny plastic sphere will interact with the light in such a way that it is pulled into the center of the light. The light can be moved around the slide, dragging the sphere with it. That is the essence of a laser tweezer. The sphere can be chemically attached to the end of a long molecule, such as DNA. When the other end of the DNA is similarly fastened to the surface of the slide, the sphere can be used to stretch the DNA. Straightening it out, and measuring properties such as the force needed to stretch it. Proteins, enzymes, and other polymers can be used in place of the DNA and the forces they exert similarly measured. In addition, the tweezers can be used to sort cells, moving them to specific locations on the slide. Well explore other mysterious consequences of quantum mechanics in the last chapter. Unanswered questions. Do all elements have a fixed number of protons and neutrons? The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom determines what element it is. So the number of protons is fixed. But, the number of neutrons can vary. Nuclei with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. For example, carbon, with six protons, can have five, six, seven, or eight neutrons. The isotopes are labeled carbon-11, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. A more compact notation is 11C, 12C, 13C, and 14C. Chemical properties in general do not depend on the isotope. 
there are at least 3,100 isotopes of all the elements presently known. What contributions did Marie and Pierre Curie make? Marie Sklodowska Curie, born and raised in Poland, but working in France. Used an electrometer to measure the ionization of the air caused by radioactive minerals. Because the amount of radioactivity produced by a uranium compound depended only on the amount of uranium present. She concluded that the atom itself must be the source. She found that the uranium containing mineral pitch blend was more radioactive than the uranium itself and concluded that the mineral must contain a small quantity of another element that was more radioactive than the uranium. Her husband, Pierre, stopped his own work and joined Marie in searching for the element. They started by grinding up 100 grams of pitch blend. But by the time they had found the element they had processed tons of the mineral. In July 1898 they announced the discovery of an element they named polonium in honor of Poland, where she had been born. In December of the same year they announced they had found an even more radioactive element that they named radium. It took until 1902 for them to separate one-tenth of a gram of radium chloride from a ton of pitch blend. In 1910 Marie announced that she had obtained pure metallic radium. Pierre and Marie shared the 1903 Physics Nobel Prize with Becquerel for their work on radioactivity. Marie won the 1911 Chemistry Nobel Prize for her discovery of polonium and radium. The dangers of radioactivity were unknown when the Curies did their work, but both were affected by it. The radon that was produced when they were processing the pitch blend would have caused lung cancer. But, the leaky windows in their workplace and their frequent bicycle rides in the country spared them. Pierre died in 1906 when he slipped on a wet street and was run over by a horse-drawn wagon. Mary's death in 1934 was due to anemia, known now to be frequently caused by radiation. What is a dip needle and how is it similar to a compass? A dip needle is just like a conventional compass. But instead of holding it horizontally, it is held vertically. It is a magnetic needle used for navigational purposes just like a compass. But is used predominantly when traveling around the North and South Poles. Instead of measuring horizontal magnetic deflection, the dip needle measures vertical magnetic inclination. When over the equator, the magnetic field of Earth is parallel to the surface of the Earth. The closer one gets to the magnetic poles, however, the less pilots rely on compasses. And the more they rely on dip needles to tell them how close they are to the poles. The closer one gets to a pole, the more vertical the magnetic field becomes. Because it's turning into the surface of Earth. Therefore, when directly over the magnetic poles, the dip needle points directly downward.
How was nuclear fission discovered? Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, 1901-1954 Was appointed professor at the University of Rome at the age of 24. Among many projects in which he and his group were involved, perhaps none was more important than his. Studies of the reactions produced when slow neutrons struck nuclei. Fermi had discovered in 1934 that slowing neutrons by passing them through paraffin greatly increased this ability to produce nuclear reactions. He did systematic studies of the results of bombarding a series of materials with slow neutrons. The German chemist Otto Hahn, 1879-1968, had a distinguished career that included inventing the field of radiochemistry in 1905, using chemical techniques and measurements of half-lives to study the results of nuclear reactions he had discovered dozens of isotopes and at least one element. Three times he was nominated for the Nobel Prize. Since 1907 he had collaborated with the Austrian physicist Lisa Meitner, 1878-1968. The teamwork between a physicist and a chemist was a great advantage. Hahn and Meitner, together with Hahn's young assistant Fritz Strassmann, 1902-1980. Employed Fermi's slow neutron techniques to create nuclear reactions, and thus more isotopes. When, in 1938, they tried bombarding uranium with neutrons they expected to create new elements beyond uranium in the periodic table. But they kept finding the element barium in the bombarded uranium. Starting in 1933, the Nazi regime forced people of Jewish origin out of all laboratories and universities. Meitner, who had Jewish parents but had converted to Protestantism in 1908, was protected because she was Austrian. But, when Austria was incorporated into Germany, she lost that protection. In July 1938, she took the train from Berlin to the Netherlands. Thanks to the intervention of two Dutch physicists she was allowed to leave Germany. But with no possessions. She soon moved to Sweden and kept up her collaboration with Han by mail. On December 17, 1938, Hahn and Strassmann submitted their findings for publication but admitted that they had no explanation for the appearance of barium. Meitner and her nephew Otto Frisch utilized Niels Bohr's liquid drop model of the nucleus and Einstein's E equals mc2 equation to propose that the nucleus had split into two releasing both extra neutrons and a large amount of energy. The Meitner-Frisch paper was submitted a few days after Hans. Frisch returned to his laboratory in England and confirmed Hans' result in January. 1939 Hahn won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in 1944, but Meitner never did. It was not long after scientists figured out how to create nuclear fusion that the Nazis began conducting research on how to turn this science into a powerful bomb. Albert Einstein and physicist Leo Szilard urged U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt start a program to complete a nuclear warhead before the Germans did.
What are the strengths and weaknesses of nuclear power? Electric power is produced primarily by plants using hydrocarbon fuels coal, oil, and natural gas. These are usually called fossil fuels and are no longer being created. When they are used up these resources are gone. Nuclear power plants can reduce our reliance on such fuels. Uranium, however, is also a fossil fuel. Coal mining has significant environmental costs. Oil is used mostly for transportation. Natural gas is relatively clean and is used mostly for home and industrial heating. Another advantage of nuclear power is the reduction in greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. One major disadvantage of nuclear power is the cost of the plant and the extremely long time scale associated with obtaining approval and constructing the facility. Costs are difficult to calculate precisely, but nuclear power and offshore wind farms are the two most expensive methods of generating electricity, while oil from the Middle East is the cheapest. As a result of these uncertainties, factors other than costs are increasingly important. Other disadvantages include the production of nuclear waste that poses long-term dangers to people due to its intense radioactivity. No long-term storage plans have been AP proved. Although underground storage in salt deposits is the most likely method. How is a compass made? A compass is a magnetized metallic pointer that can rotate about a low friction pivot point. Sometimes the pointer is placed in a container of liquid to dampen the movement of the pointer. The magnetic pointer aligns itself with the north-slash-south orientation of Earth's magnetic field. And the person using the compass can determine what direction he or she is headed by looking at the pointer. What were the implications of Ersted's discovery? The fact that moving charge in a wire could create a magnetic field created a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm in the scientific community. A week after hearing about Ours Ted's discovery, French physicist and mathematician André Marie Ampere, 1775 to 1836, gave a presentation at the French Academy of Sciences that extended Ours Ted's experiments and contained detailed analyses. A day later, he found that two parallel current carrying wires would either attract or repel each other depending on the relative directions of the currents. Amper's greatest contribution, however, was the mathematical theory he created for electricity and magnetism. British chemist and physicist Michael Faraday's 1791-1866 Philosophy led him to search for connections between phenomena like electricity, magnetism, and light. In 1821 he invented what is now called a homopolar motor. 
One end of a wire was suspended from a support so that it could swing in any direction. The other end of the wire contacted a pool of mercury. When Faraday put current through the wire the end in the mercury traced out a circle. The force that Faraday had observed wasn't formalized until 1891 and then by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz, 1853-1928. This force, called the Lorentz force law, is proportional to the current through the wire, the magnetic field, and the length of the wire. The force, which is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field, is strongest when the current and field are at right angles. This force is the basis of motors and many other applications. When Faraday published his results he failed to give credit to two other important scientists and he was given assignments to work in other fields. Nevertheless he continued to do experiments on the effects of magnetic fields. For example, he found that when dense glass was put in a magnetic field, the direction of polarization of light going through the glass was rotated. He spent 10 years searching for ways to create a current from a magnetic field. Finally, in 1831 he tried changing the magnetic field and made the crucial discovery that an electric current is produced by a changing magnetic field. The current, a flow of charges, is produced by an electric field exerting forces on the charges. Faraday went on to invent the dynamo, an early electric generator. The American high school physics teacher Joseph Henry 1797 to 1878, made the discovery at almost the same time. How is radioactive decay used to determine dates? Radioactive carbon-14, 14C, has a half-life of 5,730 years. It is produced in the atmosphere when cosmic ray neutrons strike nitrogen atoms. The 14C then reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and dissolves into the oceans. Plants take up the atmospheric CO2 in respiration and animals ingest it. Therefore all living things exchange both 12 CO2 and radioactive 14 CO2 throughout their lives. When they die the exchange stops and the fraction of 14 C to 12 C in their bodies is fixed. As time goes on the amount of 14 C decreases. Objects up to 50,000 years old can be dated by radioactive carbon as long as correction figures. Agreed to by international agencies, are applied. Willard F. Libby, 1908-1980, an American chemist. Won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1960 for his development of carbon-14 dating in 1949. There are several. Other dating techniques that use the half-lives of radioactive isotopes in rocks including uranium-slash-thorium and rubidium-slash-strontium ratios that extend dating techniques to hundreds of millions of years. Radioactive uranium-235 decays into lead, Pb207, very gradually. The half-life is 704 million years.
How was the connection between electricity and magnetism discovered? The close connection between electric current and magnetic fields was discovered quite by accident. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, 1777-1851, gave a lecture on the heating effects of an electric current on a wire. A compass happened to be near the wire and he was Surprised to see the compass rotate when the current was on. He had been looking for connections between electricity and magnetism for several years. But expected that the compass would point away from the wire. Instead he found that the compass pointed in a circle around the wire. Above the wire it pointed perpendicular to the wire. Below the wire it also pointed in the perpendicular, but in the opposite direction. How were the details of the strong force determined? Examining the kinds of isotopes that exist gives clues about the nature of the strong force. The most stable nucleus, helium-4, has two neutrons having spins in opposite directions and two protons also having spins in opposite directions. A majority of non-radioactive isotopes have even numbers of neutrons and even number of protons. Allowing them to form pairs with opposite spins. Most of the other isotopes have either an even number of protons and an odd number of neutrons or the opposite. Isotopes with both an odd number of protons and neutrons are extremely rare. So, the strength of the strong force clearly depends on the spins of the nucleons. The mass of a nucleus is less than the sum of the masses of the protons plus the sum of masses of the neutrons. The larger the mass difference, the stronger the forces holding the nucleus together and the more energy needed to pull the nucleus apart. Studies of the mass of the nuclei can thus be used to gain further insight into the strong force. Maria Geppert Meyer, 1906-1972, was a German-born American physicist who explained why nuclei with certain numbers of protons and slash or neutrons, called magic numbers, were extremely stable. Her theory showed that the nuclear force depended on both the spin of the nucleon and its orbital angular momentum. The magic numbers are 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126. Thus helium-4, the most stable nucleus, has a magic number of protons and a magic number of neutrons, and so is called doubly magic. Oxygen-16, calcium-40, and calcium-48, and lead-208, which is the heaviest stable nuclide, are also doubly magic. But, are all nuclei stable? What rays do radioactive materials emit? Among the scientists who explored radioactivity immediately after Becquerel's discovery was Ernst Rutherford. Then at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. He and Frederick Soddy found that uranium and thorium emitted two different kinds of rays. One could be stopped by paper, the other required metal about a centimeter thick. 
Rutherford named them alpha and beta rays after the first two letters in the Greek alphabet. In 1907 he named the even more penetrating rays produced by radium gamma rays. In 1900 Pierre, 1859-1906, and Marie Curie, 1867-1934. Using an electroscope, found that beta rays are negative particles. Becquerel used the same kind of apparatus J.J. Thomson. 1856 to 1940, had used, see the chapter What is the World Made of? To measure the ratio of mass to charge of an electron to determine that betas typically travel at about half the speed of light and are identical to electrons. In late 1907 Rutherford demonstrated that alpha rays were helium atoms with the two electrons removed. He had not yet discovered the nucleus. Today we say that an alpha particle is the helium-4 nucleus. Gamma rays were later found to be very high energy photons. How is Earth's magnetic field oriented? Because opposite poles attract. The north pole of a hanging magnet or compass must point toward a south pole. So, the south pole of Earth's magnet must be near the north geographic pole. The poles are actually far below Earth's surface, so Earth's field is not parallel to its surface. What is a half-life? When will a particular radioactive nucleus decay? It's impossible to know. All that can be known is the average time between formation and decay. And we know that the number of decays will be proportional to the number of nuclei present. Now, suppose we start with a large number of nuclei. In a given time interval. Say one second, a certain number will decay. At the end of that second the number of nuclei that haven't decayed will be smaller. So in the next second there will be fewer decays. At some time there will be only half as many decays in a second as there were originally. That time is called the half-life. One half-life later there will be only V4 as many decays as at the beginning. After another half-life there will be half again as many, or one-eighth the number of initial decays. How are refrigerator magnets made? Examine a refrigerator magnet. It is flexible, feels like rubber, and only one surface is attracted to metals. It doesn't stick to a stainless steel door unless the stainless has been coated with steel. It's made of rubber that has been impregnated with ferrite particles and magnetized. Small pieces, each a dipole, are then pressed together under heat to bond. Them into one thin sheet that can be cut, folded, and bonded to other sheets. What was done in Los Alamos?
In September 1942, General Groves and Robert Oppenheimer chose Los Alamos. New Mexico, as the site for the top secret laboratory at which weapons would be developed. 35 miles northwest of Santa Fe. It was almost totally isolated and the site was occupied only by a school. During World War II hastily erected housing held Nobel Prize winning scientists. Younger scientists and engineers recruited into the project, wives and children, and soldiers. After determining the critical mass, the minimal amount of enriched uranium needed to create a bomb. They designed and built the uranium-based weapon called Little Boy. The uranium was divided into two halves and placed in a cannon-like container. An explosive charge drove the two masses together. Forming a large enough mass of uranium to sustain a rapid chain reaction and explode. This weapon was never tested. It contained 64 kilograms. 141 pounds, of uranium, about 2.5 times the critical mass. Less than 1 kilograms, 2 pounds, of the uranium fissionide. Only 0.6 grams, 0.001 pounds, was converted into energy. But the result was the equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT. Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. On August 6, 1945. Over 100,000 people were killed in the blast, resulting fires and effects of radiation. The second task of Los Alamos was to design and build a weapon using plutonium. Originally they had expected to use the cannon-type method used with the uranium bomb. But when the plutonium was produced by the Hanford reactors it was found to contain 240 PU and another design had to be developed. They arranged a subcritical plutonium mass in the shape of a sphere and used specially designed explosive charges to simultaneously compress the plutonium, increasing its density above the critical point. Scientists were uncertain that the design would work, so they decided to test the device first. How do the numbers of protons and neutrons in nuclei compare? For lighter elements the number of protons and neutrons are approximately equal. For example, the most common isotope of helium with two protons is 4 He, so it has 4 to 2 equals 2 neutrons. Oxygen, with 8 protons, has 8 neutrons in its most common isotope, 16O. In elements heavier than calcium, 20 protons, 20 neutrons. The number of neutrons is larger than the number of protons. In uranium-238, 92 protons, 146 neutrons, the ratio is almost 3 neutrons for 2 protons. How was the laser invented? One of the useful applications of quantum mechanics is in each CD or DVD player in your home or in the laser pointer. It's the device that uses stimulated emission of light predicted by Einstein so many years ago. 
in 1953 Charles Towns, 1915, of Columbia University, and later MIT. Developed and patented the first application that he called a maser for microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. It used a beam of ammonia molecules and later led to the hydrogen maser. Now used as an extremely accurate clock. In 1958 Towns and Arthur Shallow described how molecules could be used to extend the maser concept to optical frequencies. After their paper was published a number of physicists at university and industrial labs rapidly tried to apply these ideas to working devices. In May 1960, Theodore Maiman, 1927 to 2007, at Hughes Aircraft Company demonstrated an optical maser that used a ruby crystal with a flash lamp. Similar to the camera flash lamp, to put the chromium atoms in the ruby into their excited states. Maiman was involved in a court fight over the validity of his patent for the laser with Gordon Gould. 1920-2005, who worked with Towns at Columbia. In 1973 Gould was awarded the patent rights. Maiman won number of awards, but never the Nobel Prize. While the laser was first described as a solution looking for a problem. Over the past 50 years lasers have become a multi-million dollar industry. Lasers have been constructed using gases, as in the familiar helium neon, or he any laser. The carbon dioxide laser used to cut fabrics and metals, the argon ion laser used in surgery. The ultraviolet excimer laser used for eye surgery, and the free electron laser used in research. Lasers made of tiny semiconducting crystals are used in CD and DVD players and laser pointers. As well as optical fiber communications equipment that brings video and the internet almost to your front door. Lasers have revolutionized research in physics, chemistry, and biology. How many nations have nuclear weapons? The Soviet Union exploded a nuclear device in 1949. It was similar to FAT. Man and was built using information delivered to that country by spies. China, Britain, and France developed nuclear weapons in the 1950s. South Africa had nuclear weapons but abandoned the program. Israel is suspected of having weapons, but has never admitted it. India and Pakistan have both tested nuclear weapons. Iran and North Korea are suspected of developing nuclear weapons. By 1953 there had been 50 above-ground tests of nuclear weapons that created radioactive fallout. Contaminating milk and animals. These effects alerted the public to the danger of such testing. The Cold War, however, created an atmosphere in which treaties could not be negotiated. In 1963 a partial test ban treaty was signed. Prohibiting tests in the atmosphere, underwater, and in space. In 1968 the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty was signed. 
non-nuclear weapon states were prohibited from building or acquiring nuclear weapons. Many nations have signed the treaty, although some major states did not on the basis that it makes no effort to curb development by states that already have such weapons. In 1996 the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty was adopted by over two-thirds of the members of the United Nations General Assembly. The United States has signed but rejected ratification in 1999. Nevertheless, 337 facilities around the world monitor compliance with the treaty. They sent data to a center in Vienna for analysis and distribution to the states that have signed the treaty. Why was plutonium used in bombs? Plutonium is not found in nature, but it is produced in reactors by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons. Plutonium-239, 239 PU, can be fissionated by slow neutrons, and so could be used in weapons. In December 1942, Hanford, Oregon, was chosen as a site for reactors that would produce plutonium. Hanford was selected because it was isolated but also on the Columbia River, which afforded a source of cooling water. Which of the three arrangements shown below would have the properties of a refrigerator magnet as described above? The top two wouldn't because both surfaces would act as a magnet. The top right hand arrangement would be a very weak magnet on both faces. Because the alternating poles would essentially cancel each other out. In the third drawing the sheets have been folded and then pressed together so that the poles are at only one surface. So only that surface would act like a magnet. The alternating N and S poles attract steel and stick to it. You can check this idea by taking two refrigerator magnets and holding the magnetic surfaces together. And then try sliding one over the other. You'll find that they skip as first N and S poles touch each other and attract. Then the like poles try to touch each other but repel, making the magnets skip. What is the origin of Earth's magnetic field? The source of Earth's magnetic field is its core made of iron, so hot that it is molten. It rotates at a slightly different rate than does Earth. And this difference creates what is called a dynamo effect, generating a magnetic field. Details of how the dynamo effect works are still a matter that is under investigation. What is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion is the opposite of fission. Two nuclei join, or fuse together, forming a more massive nucleus. 
the mass of the resultant nucleus is less than that of the reacting nuclei, so energy is released. Because the reacting nuclei are both positively charged, there is a large repulsive force between them. To overcome this force the reacting nuclei must have very high energy. Fusion was first observed by the British physicist Mark Oliphant. 1901-2000, in 1932. A typical fusion reaction involves two isotopes of hydrogen, 2H, or deuterium, and 3H, or tritium. They fuse to produce 4 He, releasing a neutron. The energy released is more than a million times larger than that released. When an electron combines with a proton to produce a hydrogen atom. Nuclear fusion occurs naturally in stars like our sun, but reproducing a fusion reaction in the laboratory has proven to be very difficult because it takes a lot of energy to fuse nuclei together. What happens when a magnet is cut in two pieces? When a magnet is cut the atoms within the domains remain aligned. In almost every case the cut would be between two domains, leaving aligned domains in the two halves. If you cut a domain you would create two smaller domains, each with a north pole and a south pole. So no matter where you cut the result is two magnets, each with its own north and south pole. The more domains, the stronger the magnet. How is nuclear fission used peacefully? Nuclear reactors produce electric power. The energy from uranium fission heats water that circulates through the reactor. The heated water produces steam that turns turbines connected to generators. As is the case with all electric power plants. Only about one-third of the energy produced by the reactor is converted into electrical energy. The remaining energy heats local rivers, lakes, or the atmosphere. In the United States there are 104 reactors that provide about 20% of the electricity used by our country. What makes up the nucleus? Ernest Rutherford, 1871-1937, had determined that the charge on the alpha particle, actually the helium nucleus, was two proton charges, but its mass was four proton masses. Dmitry Mendeleev, 1834-1907, in building the periodic table, had arranged the elements in order of their mass and had arbitrarily assigned them sequential numbers that he called the atomic number. The English physicist Henry Moseley, 1887-1915, measured the wavelengths of X-rays emitted when metals were struck by other X-rays. He was able to provide a physical basis for the atomic number and in doing so, greatly strengthened the case for Rutherford's nuclear model. But, as is the case for helium, if the atomic number, and thus the nuclear charge, 
was about half the atomic mass number, what made up the additional mass of the nucleus. The first proposal was that the missing particle was a combination of a proton and an electron, which would have the correct mass and charge. But the Heisenberg uncertainty principle showed that if an electron were confined to the size of a proton its energy would be larger than ever observed. In addition, by the late 1920s the angular momentum of the nitrogen nucleus with charge 7 and mass 14 had been measured. The result could not be obtained from a combination of 14 protons and 7 electrons. In 1931 two German physicists found that when energetic alpha particles struck light elements a very penetrating, neutral radiation was produced. The next year Marie Curie's daughter, Irene Joliot Curie, 1897-1956, and her husband, Frederick, found that if this radiation struck paraffin protons were ejected, suggesting that the radiation was actually a neutral particle with a mass near that of a proton. The next year James Chadwick, 1891-1974, working in Manchester, England, experimentally confirmed the suggestion. The particle was named a neutron, combining neutral with the ending of the word proton. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery in 1935. The neutron has a mass slightly larger than that of the proton. While neutrons are stable in non-radioactive nuclei, if they are free from the nucleus they decay with a half-life of about 10 minutes. Neutrons are used extensively in creating nuclear reactions and are necessary for nuclear fission. Which will be discussed later in this chapter. What is magnetic declination? Magnetic declination is the angular difference between north as shown by a compass and the direction to the geographic north pole, Earth's axis of rotation. Declination depends primarily on the location on Earth but, because the magnetic poles move, also on time. What discovery did James Clerk Maxwell make that depended on the work of Ersted, Faraday, and Ampere? In an earlier chapter we have seen that charges create electric fields. In this chapter we have seen that moving charges, that is, currents create magnetic fields and that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. In the 1860s Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, added a crucial additional connection. Changing electric fields can produce magnetic fields. With that idea Maxwell recognized that these relationships meant that electric and magnetic fields could move through space. The fields move through space as transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. Maxwell calculated the speed and found that it was equal to the speed of light. He published his results in 1864 and a textbook on electromagnetism in 1873. In 
1881 Oliver Heaviside wrote Maxwell's famous four equations in the form they are used today. In 1888 Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, transmit electromagnetic waves across his laboratory. Confirming Maxwell's theoretical work. Will more nuclear power plants be built? Concerns over the build-up of greenhouse gases and the environmental problems caused by coal mining has led to renewed interest in building new nuclear power plants. Advocates of construction point out that if a standardized plant could be designed, then licensing delays could be reduced and design costs minimized. In addition, several new types of plants have been suggested and undergone small-scale testing. These promise to be simpler and safer than traditional designs. While recycling nuclear fuel is an attractive option, the plutonium in used fuel rods raises issues of nuclear weapon proliferation. The problem of long term storage of nuclear waste still needs to be solved. Did physicists recognize the military uses of fission? Lisa Meitner had recognized that extra neutrons could produce a chain reaction that would produce a very large amount of energy. In early 1939 physicists from many countries attempted to create such chain reactions by slowing down the released neutrons. Among these were Enrico Fermi and a Hungarian-born physicist, Leo Szilard. They saw signs that such a reaction had occurred. In August 1939 Szilard drafted a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, 1882 to 1945 that the german results could lead to in an extremely powerful new weapon to give his letter more weight he convinced einstein to sign the letter it worked roosevelt directed the government to support fission research and created the uranium committee while there were several important studies during the next 3 years it was the British who made the breakthrough finding that the rare isotope uranium-235 could be used in a weapon. The Americans were informed but ignored the results until a personal visit by one of the British team members convinced the Uranium Committee of the need for action. The United States then established a new office that could authorize large-scale engineering projects. Enriched in uranium-235 created a need for enrichment plants. One method chosen had been developed in California. Uranium metal would be evaporated in a vacuum. The atoms went through a narrow slit and then into a region with a strong magnetic field. Because of their mass difference the two isotopes followed slightly different paths. The atoms condensed on the surfaces of separate containers. Dozens of giant machines, called calotrons, were built in a plant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Chosen because abundant electricity was available from the nearby hydroelectric plants. Not enough copper was available to wind the coils for the magnets so 70,000. 
0.000 pounds of silver bullion were borrowed from the US Treasury to be formed into wires for the machines. Somewhat enriched uranium from the calotrons was then combined with fluorine to produce the gas U6. Because of the mass difference of the two isotopes 235U6 would diffuse through porous membrane slightly faster, about 0.5%, than its more massive counterpart. Thousands of separations were needed to produce weapons grade uranium, 85 to 90 percent 235 U. The plant at Oak Ridge built to accomplish this gaseous diffusion had an area of 2 million square feet. Employed 12,000 workers, and cost the equivalent of $6.2 billion in 1999 dollars. At one time it consumed 17% of all the electricity produced in the United States more than New York City. When was the first atomic device exploded? The gadget was a test version of the plutonium bomb. It was installed on the top of a 30 meter, 100 foot tower in the New Mexico desert at a location 35 miles southeast of Socorro, New Mexico, on the White Sands Proving Ground. The explosion, called Trinity, occurred on July 16, 1945. The energy yield was about 20,000 tons of TNT. More than twice what had been expected. The implosion type bomb was much safer and more effective than the cannon style little boy design and has been used for all other nuclear weapons. How is uranium enriched today? Today ultracentrifuges are used for uranium enrichment. A centrifuge is routinely used in medical labs to separate materials of different density. The test tubes are spun rapidly and the denser materials move away from the center of rotation because it requires more centripetal force to pull them toward the center. A gas ultracentrifuge uses a rapidly rotating drum to separate the UF6 with the two isotopes. Gas centrifuges supply about 54% of the enriched uranium today. Each centrifuge is a more effective separator than a stage in a gaseous diffusion plant and requires only 6% of the electrical energy of gaseous diffusion. What holds a nucleus together? Protons, all being charged positively, will repel each other. So there must be an attractive force that holds the nucleus together. The strong nuclear force acts between protons and protons. Protons and neutrons, and neutrons, and neutrons, all with the same strength. Because the strong force acts the same on protons and neutrons. The two particles are frequently lumped together under the name nucleon. While the repulsive electromagnetic force acts over long distances. The strong nuclear force only acts between nucleons that are in contact. 
nucleons have angular momentum, or spin. And the strong force depends on the relative orientation of the spins. The force is stronger if the spins are in opposite directions. What is the closest fusion reactor? The Sun In stars like the Sun the principal reaction is called the proton-proton cycle. That was first described by the German-American physicist Hans Bethe. 1906 to 2005, in 1939. In the first step two protons fuse into a deuterium, 2H, nucleus. The deuterium has a proton and a neutron, so the second proton changed into a neutron. Releasing a positron and a neutrino. The positron annihilates with an electron, producing two gamma rays. In the second stage the deuterium fuses with another proton to produce helium-3, 3, 3 He, plus a gamma ray. In the Sun the third stage is primarily a fusion between two 3 He nuclei producing 4 He plus 2 protons. So the net reaction is an input of 4 protons and an output of 2 4 He plus 6 gammas and 2 neutrinos as well as a lot of energy due to the loss of 0.7% of the mass of the protons. In order to accomplish these reactions the protons must be moving with a large amount of kinetic energy. The equivalent of a temperature of about 10 million kelvins. What is the closest fusion reactor? The Sun In stars like the Sun the principal reaction is called the proton-proton cycle. That was first described by the German-American physicist Hans Bethe. 1906 to 2005, in 1939. In the first step two protons fuse into a deuterium, 2H, nucleus. The deuterium has a proton and a neutron, so the second proton changed into a neutron. Releasing a positron and a neutrino. The positron annihilates with an electron, producing two gamma rays. In the second stage the deuterium fuses with another proton to produce helium-3, 3, 3 He, plus a gamma ray. In the Sun the third stage is primarily a fusion between two 3 He nuclei producing 4 He plus 2 protons. So the net reaction is an input of 4 protons and an output of 2 4 He plus 6 gammas and 2 neutrinos as well as a lot of energy due to the loss of 0.7% of the mass of the protons. In order to accomplish these reactions the protons must be moving with a large amount of kinetic energy. The equivalent of a temperature of about 10 million kelvins.